This is my part two video on reflection versus refraction. I have a link of the first video below. But in the first video, we learned that when light gets reflected, it begins in a certain medium, and then it gets reflected into that same original medium. However, in refraction, the ray of light begins in a certain medium, and then it gets refracted into a new medium. So that's the difference between reflection versus refraction. And in the last video, we learned that this angle of incidence will always equal this angle of reflection. That is the law of reflection, and that will always be true. However, we also learned that this angle of incidence will not equal the angle of refraction. So these will be, this angle of incidence usually will not equal the angle of refraction. For example, let's say this angle of incidence was 50 degrees. Therefore, the angle of reflection will also be 50 degrees because the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. However, let's say this angle of incidence was 50 degrees. What would the angle of refraction be? Well, in this situation, the angle of refraction is 10 degrees. So in this example, the angle of incidence does not equal the angle of refraction. So if you have the angle of incidence, how do you determine the angle of reflection? Well, again, the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. So therefore, if you know the angle of incidence, it's very easy to determine the angle of reflection because they will always equal each other. However, if you have the angle of incidence, how do you determine the angle of refraction? Because we know usually the angle of incidence does not equal the angle of refraction. So if you're given the angle of incidence, how can you determine the angle of refraction? Well, in order to determine the angle of refraction, you need to use Snell's law. So Snell's law tells us if you know the index of refraction of this air medium and multiplied by the sine of this angle of incidence, that will equal the angle of refraction of this glass medium times sine this angle of refraction. So this is the relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. But what exactly is going on in the Snell's law and what is an index of refraction? Well, what, what does this mean? So what exactly is going on in the Snell's law? Well, let's try an example. Let's say we have this instant light that gets refracted into this glass medium. So again, we started in air and then we entered into glass. So this light has been refracted into this glass medium. So how do we characterize these rays of light? Well, again, in the last video, we learned the first step is to find this normal perpendicular line, the line that makes a 90 degree angle with this material interface. So we would find these angles. So we know this angle that the ray of the incident light has with this normal line, this angle represents the angle of incidence. And we know this angle, the angle between the refracted light and this normal line represents the angle of refraction. However, if we know this angle of incidence, how do we determine the angle of refraction? So in order to determine this angle of refraction, first we need to determine the index of refraction of air and the index of refraction of glass. So we would look in a physics textbook and see that the index of refraction of air equals 1.000277. And we would also see that the index of refraction of glass equals 1.5. However, what is this index of refraction and what does it tell us? Well, the larger the index of refraction is for a certain medium, the slower light travels in that medium. So therefore, because glass has a higher index of refraction than air, therefore light travels slower in glass relative to air. So how do you determine the index of refraction of a certain medium? Well, let's say we're interested in the index of refraction for medium X, whichever medium we're interested in. Well, to determine the index of refraction for medium X, you need to take the speed of light in a vacuum and divide it by the speed of light in that medium X that you're interested in. For example, what is the index of refraction of air? Well, the index of refraction for air equals the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in air. So if we were to plug in these values, we know the speed of light in a vacuum is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And we also know the speed of light in air is 2.997 meters per second. 
So therefore, the index of refraction of the air is 1.000277. Uh, you just use this simple equation and divide these two values, and then you get the index of refraction of air. So therefore, it's very straightforward to determine the index of refraction for mediums. And again, this index of refraction tells us how fast light travels in that medium. So now that we understand what indexes of refractions are, now we can begin to use Snell's law. So essentially, Snell's law tells us if you know the index of refraction of air and multiplied by the sine this angle of instance, that will equal the index of refraction of this glass times the sine this angle of refraction. So therefore, let's try an example. Let's say that we have this instant light with this angle of instance of 74 degrees. If we know this angle of instance, how do we determine the angle of refraction? Will the angle of refraction be small or will the angle of refraction be large? How do we determine this angle of refraction? Well, all we need to do is use Snell's law. So we would plug in all these values. So we know the index of refraction of air is 1.000277. So we would plug in that value. And we know this angle of instance is 74 degrees. So we would plug in that value. And we also know this index of refraction of glass is 1.5, so we would plug in that value. So we would plug in all the values and we would be left with this. Again, the index of refraction of air, the angle of instance, and the index of refraction of glass. So now all that's left is solving this angle of refraction. So therefore we would solve for this. So the first step is to divide both sides by 1.5. So if you divide both sides by 1.5, you're left with this. But now we need to get rid of this pesky sine function. So how do you get rid of the sine function? Well, you multiply both sides by the inverse sine. And if you multiply both sides by the inverse sine, this cancels out. So now you're left with this. So now you would simply plug this into the calculator. And if you plug this into the calculator, you would be left with 39.8 degrees. So this is the angle of refraction. So now you know the angle of refraction. But again, what exactly is this angle of refraction? Well, remember, this angle of refraction is specifically the angle between this normal line and the refracted light. So therefore, we know the refracted light looks like this. And a mistake people make is they get this angle of refraction and they think the angle of refraction is between this horizontal line and the refracted light. And that's wrong. Specifically, this angle of refraction is the angle between this normal perpendicular line and the refracted light. So again, this is an example of using a calculation to determine Snell's law. However, the key idea, the main point when it comes to Snell's law, is that whenever a ray of light gets refracted into a new medium, as long as you know the index of refraction of the original medium, and multiplied by the sine of the angle that the ray of light has with this normal line, so again, that particular angle, that value will equal the index of refraction of the new medium times the sine, the angle that the ray of light has with this normal line, so times the sine of that angle. So those values, those products will always equal each other. So now let's say that this ray of light now enters into a new medium. Let's say that this ray of light goes from glass into water. How can we determine the angle of refraction? Well, again, as long as you know the index of refraction of the original medium and multiplied by the sine of the angle that the original ray of light has with this normal line, so times the sine of that particular angle, that product will equal the index of refraction of the new medium times the sine, the angle that the refracted light has with this normal perpendicular line. So times the sine of that particular angle. So that product, those products will always equal each other. The index of refraction of the original medium multiplied by sine, this angle of instance, will equals the index of refraction of the new medium times the sine of this angle of refraction. So it's just that simple, and these two values will always equal each other. So that's true whenever a ray of light enters into a new medium. As long as you determine that product, it's going to equal the product in that new medium. So again, that's the relationship with the angle of instance with the angle of refraction. 
And that's true with any two mediums. For example, in this example where the ray of light starts in the glass and enters into the water, as long as you know this angle of incidence, you can determine the angle of refraction using the Snell's law, this simple relationship. So let's try one last example. Let's say we have this ray of light that's in this olive oil medium. But let's say this ray of light gets refracted into a nearby diamond. How can we determine this angle of refraction? Well, again, as long as we know the index of refraction of this olive oil and multiplied by the sine of this angle that this instant light makes with this normal perpendicular line, that product will equal the index of refraction of this diamond medium multiplied by the sine, this angle that the refracted light has with this normal perpendicular line. So multiplied by the sine of that angle. So again, those two products will always equal each other. And we can see that the angle that these rays of light make with this normal perpendicular line is very important. So, so again, this angle that the rays of light make relative to this normal perpendicular line is very important for Snell's law. But again, these two products will always equal each other. But now let's try another example. Let's say this ray of light now gets refracted into a different diamond, a second diamond. What's going to happen? Well, again, now that this ray of light becomes the instant light, and again, it gets refracted into this new diamond. So again, this is the refracted light. So again, how do you determine this angle of refraction? Well, again, as long as you know the index of refraction of the original diamond and multiplied by the sine of the angle that this ray of light has with this normal perpendicular line, that product will equal the index of refraction of this new diamond multiplied by the sine, the angle that this refracted light makes with this normal perpendicular line. So multiplied by the sine of that angle. So again, these two products will always equal each other. These two products will always equal each other. That's the basis of Snell's law. But keep in mind, both of these are diamonds. The ray of light started in a diamond and it ended in a diamond. So they're both, both these mediums are gonna have the same index of refraction because they're the same medium. So therefore, if they both have the same index of refraction and we know these two products equal each other, Therefore, these two angles must equal each other. So therefore, the angle of instance will equal this angle of refraction. And that's the only example where the angle of instance will equal the angle of refraction. This angle of instance will equal the angle of refraction only when the medium is the same or when the me both mediums have the same index of refraction. But again, that's the basis of Snell's law. And the key idea is whenever a ray of light enters into a new medium, as long as you determine this product of the original medium, it's going to equal this product of the new medium. And that's the basis of Snell's law.